Alrighty, Dr. Hangren, we'd just like to thank you for this opportunity that we have to present today on our uh, findings about prosthetic leg optimization. Uh, we've really enjoyed the opportunity that we've had to really learn and become experts in this area. And I'd like to thank my team members, Mike and Jordan, for the wonderful help that they've given us. Um, so to kind of start it out, uh, we just kind of wanted to go a brief overview of just prosthetic legs in general and how they work. Um, in trying to learn how to model this system, a lot of it um, was trying to figure out exactly what the interactions are. Like, how does one part of your leg affect the next part, and w where does it affect, and when does it affect? And so in, in learning that, we also had to figure out, okay, so how do we put controls on these parameters? Like, how do we limit them? Is there a limit, or are they just allowed free range? What? Because your knee doesn't necessarily bend you know, 360 degrees, there are limits to it and it's so is learning how to figure it out where to put controls on it and stuff. And so as you can see, like that we have just here, you know, there's in the motor unit, um, like, so this part right here, this runs all of this section. So that we got the, the solenoid pushes into a, a clutch which engages the spring. And then if you look at that, it's the spring is connected to this nice lever here that then allows for our angle of our knee to bend and stuff and so we had to figure out how to take into account all of these wonderful interactions. So here we have our, our overall model um, and it's pretty complex like Ryan was saying there's a lot of things interacting with each other um, but the basis of our model is here we can enter our walking velocity um, so the speed that we want our body to be walking at and then that um, we relate to the angle that our, that our knee is bending at and the force necessary to apply um, to the knee, which then eventually at the end can spit out kind of a model of, of how our leg is moving. And in this modeling, we have our, our spring constant, like the picture showed, there's that spring, and depending on its stiffness, will um, decide just how far our leg is able to reach um, with each step. And so our process our desire was to, to optimize that spring constant and so that we can best you know, save energy that we're putting into our leg but we can also best model um, the way we take our steps. Right, so um, a more accurate stride distance translates to a, a slightly lower efficiency in the energy. So what we wanted to do was optimize kind of the balance between those. We um, we calculated the efficiency of each and decided that where they intersect in the, on this graph would be kind of a good balance and a, a good optimization for this uh, process. And that gave us a K value of 1.94 uh, newtons per meter, which comparing to the literature value of 1.91 was in the ballpark there pretty well. So we can trust that, um, trust that value. Yeah. Felt pretty good about that, and so then we just plugged that back into our model um, and ran it to, to get our final results. So this graph we have first here, we have our, this is our body velocity, so how fast we're moving. And we set that at a, a random time generator, a random number generator, so that across time we could see how it reacted as we um, desired different size steps. And then this line going up is, is tracking the distance our leg is moving. Um, you'll notice it has very flat regions, and that's essentially when your other foot is taking a step, your prosthetic leg isn't moving, and so it stays flat, and then it will take a step afterwards. And as you can see, that as our velocity goes down, our, our step size goes down, and so we feel we did a pretty good job of, of modeling our prosthetic leg.